All right, and our friends are doing well. Let me show you. The whole family is over there. Look at that. Look at those duckies. Oh, mighty mallards with their power and honor. Hanging out. Probably all this stuff that grows out of there grows out of there because uh, this looks like it's the outlet from like my, my kitchen. <laughs> so it's like powerful amounts of chicken essence, you know. Those ducks are like, dang, something smells kind of good, kind of weird <laughs> at the same time. So, um, I, uh, hey, I've actually had a really kind of positive energy moment. You know, a lot of positive energy, you know, like having this feeling like, you know, okay, the things are healing, things are not so terrible. And really something that, that was kind of funny because it was like, you know, some black dude, like, like kind of clowning, you know, kind of busting like a funny snap kind of thing but like he's like you know or is that guy no it's that dude who did that those memes where he cuts himself into into talk shows um and that he's like but you said we're in a fascist dictatorship now and he goes but you're allowed to talk about that you're in a fascist dictatorship <laughs> because i don't understand <laughs> how does that work and I loved it. I'm like, that's pretty funny. That's legit. That's funny. It was a well done meme, especially the way he cut himself into the scene. Joy Behar looking around like, what? Huh? What? So I want to make sure. Actually, there's one. Joy, Joy Behar. All I know about Joy Behar, being that I watched a lot of television. Look, doggo. 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 Um, and so... Uh, Hey, doggo. It's all good. Sweet. Nice doggo. Doesn't bark. It's real nice. Well cared for. Looking good. That, that dog needs a... Needs a, a steak and some champagne. I'd go with that fur coat. <laughs> so, anyway. <clears throat> the, uh, as I recall... And I'm wondering if, if some of you older gentlemen could... Could... Uh, make me know if I, I remember this right. As I recall, Joy Behar is famous for her blue humor, and then Joy Behar is famous for waxing racial and vulgar. She was on Hollywood Squares in my childhood. I, re I swear, I remember this clearly. I don't know her from any other shows, any other stand-up, anything else. But she would always make jokes about having sex with black men. I remember this so clearly because I thought it was so fucking funny. I mean, I was young. This is like old reruns of, of Hollywood Squares. So, and it was still on when I was a kid. So, it, so I'm like sitting back like, the, Joy Behar is one of these many people. Like Whoopi Goldberg was from that great era of time of the total uh coked out coke head uh new york uh scene um if anybody has seen the whoopi goldberg like the famous movie it's obvious that that's kind of the basis of her humor is kind of like you know coked up um you just have to know like the era of time um like she wasn't somebody who yeah, it, it, that, that was what the style was. It was the style at that time. So I just kind of find it funny that now Joy Behar and Whoopi Goldberg like to wax all self-righteous when I'm like, okay, Joy, as I recall, all of your humor was about race. And it wasn't, it was not meant to be exactly complimentary. It was... You know, it was like kind of that humor, like how much of a slut am I? I sleep with only black men, you know, kind of jokes, you know, and, the, you know, and it was it was a part of sexy feminism. Um, but I just, you know, I just I just can't set that aside because it's just one of those moments where it's, you know, now that we've gotten there, that it's like, why are why is it all these 
liberals of the of the boomer era are are like that now like they're trying to fake it they're trying to be like oh we would never say something like that in the 70s you know and it's like yeah actually you would <laughs> and then when people like are funny like something from the 70s it's like everyone gets so offended now and i'm like this is what made the liberals the liberals is you could make jokes that were absolutely and totally inappropriate and and i mean really like most female comedians of my childhood their whole basis was incredibly inappropriate humor and uh subtle mockeries of feminism but still fundamentally kind of feminist and i mean it was good it was funny shit it was funny fucking shit um i i just don't get why like how they got to this point of just being like anti fucking funny like not just not funny but like anti funny and it's like that okay male comedians have to poke humor at themselves that's just how it is like um richard pryor and his cool walk you know or richard pryor learning about karate <laughs> you're like talking all this shit and then suddenly this nigga kicks you in your balls you know <laughs> just was like oh my god that's and it just it would blip oh <laughs> i was like oh my god and uh i mean there's just so much of this stuff and and, and, and what i'm wondering now is is there going to come a time when the the present young the millennial liberals and gen z liberals throw out their tradition of being funny and and making fun of themselves and then then also making fun of other people because that's a part of humor um are they going to throw all of that out so as to like i don't know like come up with some kind of new funny you know and you funny <laughs> new funny um yeah and and like that one british comedian you know who just gets up there and just says the just the most strange psycho shit and you're just sitting there like okay i don't understand if this is supposed to be funny or what's going on here and uh she thinks she's breaking you know i'm breaking ground you guys don't understand my level of and then people are like no i mean this is literally just absolutely not comedy like you obviously don't understand the art form but no you can't make this and so now that's why the ai i just talked to a kid he's way into music trained well trained very well grandmother made him put quarters on the backs of his hands as he played piano quarters can't fall off i think it might have even been stacked them that i'm what and so uh yeah, and of course, you know, but it, grandma was from, from the islands, from Philippines. Um, and so homie was just telling me, like, I just, I heard a Kanye West song that wasn't made by Kanye West. It was made by a computer. And he goes, and I'm, I was sure I would be able to tell the difference. And he goes, and I couldn't. He's like, I couldn't tell the difference. And, and now I'm, I'm like, yeah, I got to send you this playlist of all of these, these bands that never existed. So now there's this part of me, like, you know, that when I think of AI and humor, I think of that, you know, computer and that, that one show and awkward, you know, <laughs> you say this, you say this, then you add awkward at the end. And, uh, and so I just thought about that, like, <laughs> Well, it gets so bad that all art's going to have to be made by the Japanese and Koreans or a computer that Americans are just not going to be able to pull it off anymore. No, um, yeah. And then AI is a tool for artists. Does this take away their vision? Does this really make the artist not exactly an artist? 
because they still got to know what what works and what doesn't. They still got it's it, there's some they still there's still qualities that any work is it, it, it's it's for a human audience. It's about the audience, and so I'm I just yeah I'm. It, but I have a very positive feeling about all this. Will we have Bjork forever? <laughs> All right, later. Oh, my God. Bjork, James Brown duets. Can it be done? Just putting it out there.